Hello guys, how are you guys doing? I hope that everyone is doing well. I have four DIYs in this video and I'm starting off at the Dollar Tree because this is where it's at. This is where the party is. This is where I buy most of my DIY supplies because it is affordable and they have practically everything. And as you can see, my shopping cart is completely full. Here are some of the things that I bought that will give you an idea of what I used in this video, including some wooden planks and some stickers. These stickers were purchased at Dollar General, but the rest of them are purchased at Dollar Tree. Don't forget to pick up your foam board, your poster board, and some extra cardboard because that does come in handy. But because Dollar Tree didn't have all the poster board that I needed, especially the colored ones, I did stop by Walmart to pick up those. Okay, let's get this party started. This isn't really much of a DIY or a project in any way. It's actually fairly simple. I was inspired by a picture that I saw on Pinterest of a Polaroid um, DIY. And it's just like a little backdrop and you can make as many as you want. We only made the one, but my idea was that we were all gonna take pictures with this and we never made it. So it's up to you if you wanna do this or not. It's super simple. We just cut a square out to make it look like a Polaroid and then we have some stickers that we found from Dollar General and then for the center part between the happy and the birthday we have some stickers from Dollar Tree that really just tie it all together and of course my daughter wanted to help out because she really likes helping out with our DIYs but I think it turned out pretty cute and I'm glad that at least two people got to use this Polaroid photo booth prop. Isn't it cute? This is another idea that I found actually on Amazon. It's also supposed to be a photo booth prop, but I wanted our names on it to really accentuate the fact that we're celebrating all four of our birthdays together. So I found some sticks from the Dollar Tree and I wanted it to be long enough, so I bought two of them and I stapled them together. My suggestion would be to double enforce it with either tape or also hot glue or all three of them because although it was pretty sturdy it did get bumped into quite a bit of times and it started to fall over so i would suggest just making sure that the sticks are well put together so that they stand straight up and don't fall apart on you the next thing i did was i found these arrows or like wooden planks and i just covered them with cardstock I already had this cardstock. It's actually a glittery cardstock, so it does make it a little bit harder for you to stick decorations onto them. So make sure that you have plenty of hot glue on hand. This is where you can get really creative. I found a lot of these stickers from Dollar Tree, but you can find stickers at Dollar General as well. And if all else fails, you can find some stickers at um, Michael's. But I really don't suggest shopping there because they are extremely expensive. And if you're on a budget, believe it or not, Dollar Tree is the way to go. The only problem is, like I said earlier, is that the stickers did have a hard time sticking to the glittery part of this cardstock. So I would suggest instead of just sticking them down, you stick them with some hot glue. Also, I really suggest buying some double-sided foam tape or cushion tape. It will totally add some dimension to your decoration so they're not standing straight flat up against your wooden planks. I also created my own stickers by going on Google and just uh, pasting them on word and then I cut them out myself so that I love the 80s part is my own sticker and then the totally rad and the awesome cutouts were from Party City so I just cut them off the little string and I add them to my little signs and that's my mess <laughs> okay so now all I'm gonna do is just arrange them onto my sticks and I hot glued every plank onto the stick and it actually held up pretty good so hot glue does do a great job here so I know I didn't take any footage of this part, I'm sorry guys, but it was a last minute decision. I went back to the Dollar Tree and I found a plastic silver bucket, I think it's like an ice bucket, and I put a couple of rocks at the bottom just to give it some weight, and I added some foam so that the stick had some grip to it, so I stuck it inside the foam, and then I covered it with some ribbon, and then I decorated it with a little bow. And I did this so that it wasn't standing up against the wall. I wanted it to stand on its own, and I think that that was a good idea because it looks really cute standing right next to the balloon arch, and it fit perfectly with our theme. This 
this is by far my favorite project out of all of these DIYs. I am super excited to share them with you. I really wanted Rubik's Cube to be a big part of our 80s theme. So we went to Walmart and we bought a bunch of this colored poster board. We couldn't find the exact colors that we were looking for that was on our traditional Rubik's Cube, but we worked with what we could find and I still think that it came out great. So we just cut up a bunch of foam board into 14 inch squares and then we made four and a half inch little squares in five, six different colors. I tried looking for this tutorial in different areas. I tried Pinterest and YouTube and Google and I couldn't find a tutorial that I really liked. So I came up with this idea all on my own based on the experience that I had working with foam board. So I really hope that you find this tutorial super easy. We ended up making two large Rubik's cube that were 14 inches and then we made three eight inch cubes. We also didn't want them to be exactly the same, so we made two Rubik's cubes that looked like they were finished, and then we made three of them that were kind of all jumbled up and in the works of being finished. Just be really careful when you're cutting out your squares that you don't want to cut into your carpet. So I was pretty much scoring them and then I lifted them to cut them all the way through. For each cube, you're gonna need six large sides and then you're gonna need 36 colored squares. To get the size of each tile, we took 14 inches and divided that by three because there's three squares for each side and that came out to 4.66. However, we didn't want the tiles to sit perfectly next to each other, so we took off a 16th inch and rounded it off to four and a half inch squares so that there's a small gap between each tile. And then we just simply glued them down using hot glue. This is probably the trickiest part of the entire project is being able to glue them together so that it's an equal square. And if you don't do this correctly, it will not come out right. It will come out a little bit wonky and you might have some gaps. And that was my first mistake and the reason why I came up with my second idea. Because if you try to just simply glue them together, you will have some major gapping and it won't be a perfect square. But I did end up fixing this and I will show you that later on. So sometimes the Dollar Tree doesn't have black foam board or any foam board at all and if all you can find is white, just simply cover your white foam board with black cardstock paper and it'll work just as good. So here's the second attempt on making this Rubik's Cube and this time I used a technique that I remember from elementary school and all I did was I took all of my foam board pieces and I formed a T and then I taped it together with some black masking tape. Just make sure that your foam pieces are perfectly sitting next to each other so that there's no gaps. Now all I'm gonna do is place some origami and I'm going to fold them into a box and I'm gonna glue them on the outside in between the creases and on the inside so that it is perfectly glued together and it won't fall apart on you. Okay, so now how to fix the gapping part. I just took some black masking tape and I taped the each corner so that it covered that gap. And then I just used a ruler to take off any excess. And I ended up really liking how this looked because it made it look legit. So I did this for all of my Rubik's Cubes. And now you have a perfect Rubik's Cube that's in a perfect square and no one would ever know that you made a mistake and you can't see any gapping. And if some of the tape took off any of the color from your poster board, just simply go over it with a little bit of marker and you won't be able to see any of those mistakes either.
As I was scrolling through Pinterest and looking for ideas on some DIYs, I found a cake that was a three-tiered Pac-Man cape, and so it gave me this idea to turn it into a cake pop stand. To make my boxes, I cut out two of each 12, 9, and 6 inch squares, and then I cut the side panels to be three and a half inches wide. And you're going to need four side panels for each box. Using the same technique that I used for my Rubik's Cube, I just taped each side panel to one square. Then I'm going to fold up the sides and I'm going to tape each corner with some black masking tape. You can reuse any boxes that you want instead of making them yourself, but I didn't have any boxes that were perfect for this project. I wanted my boxes to fit exactly three inches different in size, and I wanted the widths of the sides to be exactly the same. That way the tiers were uniform and my cake pops would sit perfectly on each side. To add some extra support to ensure that my cake pop stands wouldn't collapse into each other, I just used some cake pop sticks and I glued them to the centers so that the top square had something to rest on and I added some extra support of the weight of the cake pops. You can do this part in any way that you'd like, but I wanted my cake pop stand to be black, so I used some wrapping paper to cover the boxes with, but I think that it would have probably looked a lot sharper if I would have just used some black poster board. I just didn't have enough poster board. All I had left was this wrapping paper, but it still looks good either way, and you're gonna be covering it with some decorations anyway, so don't be too meticulous about this part. Now I'm just going to stack my tiers together and I tried to use a ruler to get a good border around the sides so that my cake pops fit uniform on each side and I just used some hot glue to glue my boxes together. This cake pop stand should hold about 30 to 36 cake pops. I'm on Word and I am going to be decorating the side panels of my cake pop stand. So what I did was I found some images that I liked off Google and now I'm going to print them on Word. But before I do that, I had to size them exactly to the sizes of my sides. But what I had to do was I had to make sure to take out all the margins. So I pulled these all the way over to the ends. That way these images right here I could stretch them out as far as I could because my bottom tier is 12 inches so I think this only stretches out to 11 inches and I had to make sure that the width was right too. So I picked this as the top tier and then these are the side panels, one from each side. In order for me to get it to kind of like mirror the image, I had to copy here and I had to go to paint and then what you do here is you press this little rotate and flip option and it'll rotate it for you and then I just pasted it into Word and now I have two pictures for each side and they are mirrored so they're not exactly the same on each side um, so I did the same thing with this one and then um, this is going to be on the base of my cake pop stand this is my topper essentially this is the the second tier um, these are the side panels and this is gonna be the front of my bottom tier. So it kind of looks like it's going to be the Pac-Man arcade game. So I'm hoping that I did this right. I'm gonna print them out on cardstock, and yes, it's gonna waste a lot of ink, but it's gonna be worth it. So let's go ahead and print this out. Now for the fun part, all I'm gonna do is glue them down on each side of the panels and finish decorating my cake pop stand. I didn't worry about covering the back side only because that part's not going to be seen.
honestly, I couldn't tell you why I came up with this idea. I just kind of wanted it to match the Pac-Man cake pop stand. So I came up with this idea. Hopefully it comes out right and you guys like it. I started off with one white poster board, but you could use black. Actually black might even be better. And then I had two pieces of sticky cardstock in this dark blue color because I kind of thought that it matched the Tetris color and then I cut it down to size and then I created the backdrop part of it which is kind of like the screen of the Tetris game and I glued it together so that it fit one large piece and then I just started creating all of the side panels. I can't give you exact measurements of each side because I don't really know. It. I just kind of did this by hand and I winged it. So I'm hoping that the video will show you in detail exactly what I did. It's really not that hard. Just make sure that all of your pieces are exactly the same size on each side so that it's completely uniform and it stands straight up. My main focus was just to make this look like an arcade game. Tetris was one of those games that I really loved playing growing up and I still do today. Um, I also really love Nintendo, Mario Brothers to be exact. I wanted to bring back the nostalgia of all of the old school games and that's why I created this. I kind of wish that I would have been able to make a Mario Brothers piece as well, but I just didn't have anywhere to put it. And there was a lot of details involved with Mario Brothers, so I chose Tetris instead. I remember back when I was 12 years old, I used to go visit my stepdad, well, I considered him like an uncle back in those days, but he lived in San Diego, and I'm not sure if you guys remember Nickel City, where all of the games were nickel. Those places don't even exist anymore. Arcades are probably not even a quarter anymore. I haven't been to an arcade in forever, but I used to love going into Nickel City. I would take his stash of coins, and I would just go in there and play Tetris all day. They also have this other game. I can't remember the name of the game for the life of me. Maybe you guys could help me remember. But it was these little tiles in different colors and it used to go t -t -t -t, and it would start off slow and it would go further down the line and you would have to stack the colors and once you reach three then you would get some points. I used to really love playing that game. I really miss the old days when I used to be able to walk over to Nickel City and just play arcade games while my stepdad was at work. It was just a fun time, really old, old nostalgia moments for me and that's another reason why I created this party was because I wanted to bring back the nostalgia. Nothing is like it used to be. The 80s was probably the best era. The 90s was really great too and all of the games, the movies, the music, everything was just so fun and great. I miss those times and um, I really wanted to bring that back for at least one night here for this party. Okay to get back to what I was doing here is I'm just creating the side panels and I'm using glittery sticker paper that I found from the Dollar Tree and I actually made a mistake by cutting off that corner so I glued it back together that way it was completely full on both sides and I'm just using hot glue. A lot of these supplies that I used was either I already had on hand or I got it from the Dollar Tree so it's a really affordable piece to make other than the ink. If you don't have a printer or you don't want to use your ink, you could always save your document to Word and you can transfer it over to your phone and you could take it to Staples and you can have it printed for you. And then I just created a little Tetris sign using the foam board just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I wanted to color every part of this so that there was no white showing. That's why I said you should probably use black foam board instead. And that's it. It's a pretty simple piece. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it looked really great on the dessert table. So here are the two DIYs that I just did, the cake pop stand and this Tetris treat stand. I used it for my pretzel rods, but you could use it for anything that you would like to use it for. If you would like to see how I made the cake, I invite you to go check out my other channel. It's called 
baking at home with Shelly Lynn. I'm currently not trying to monetize that channel. I'm just simply trying to share my work. There's not many videos on there yet. Eventually over time, I will be putting a little bit more videos in there, but I'm not gonna be consistent like I am on this channel. But yes, if you would like to go and see how I made this cake, please go over there and check it out. And here's the rest of all of the decorations. If you haven't seen my previous video of how I set up this entire party, I invite you to go take a look. It took weeks for us to put this together. I cannot take credit for all of it myself. My friend Crystal did so much to help me out and I think everything just turned out incredible. Also in this video, there are a few more DIYs for you to check out, very simple and easy to do, including all of the decorations and three balloon arches. This is the last video of our 80s themed birthday party series. I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching these videos. If you haven't seen them, please go take a look. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. I really don't know how I'm gonna top off these videos and how I'm gonna create more that are better than these. And I don't create parties very often, but when I do, I promise to share them with you. But we are going back to our regular scheduled program. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching and hanging out with me. I will see you guys in my next video. Shelly is out for now. Take care guys, bye-bye.